morning everybody we're in Brandon Manitoba the Husky we're going to Timmy's where are you? that's it uh, we're at the Timmy's we get our breakfast and then we're gonna head that way for about two and a half to three hours and this trip will be done this is the same Timmy's we stopped at on the way to Saskatchewan Hopefully they got parking for us in the back here. You know, I find very often that uh, Timmy's and Esso gas stations and truck stops are on the same property. I wonder if they got like a deal going. Are they owned by the same company or something? Very often, right across Canada, if there's an Esso, very likely there's going to be a Timmy's there too. Esso is just like a big, uh, big gas station chain across the entire country up here. For those of you who are not from Canada, this is E S S O Esso. They bought out Husky, and it's a pretty big thing right now. It's sort of like, uh, uh, you know, sort of like Pilot, you know, Pilot Flying J. They became one thing. Up here, Esso Husky became one thing. But I'm wondering if Tim Hortons, like, how how did they get in on it? Because they're at every, almost at every Esso too. Maybe they're just good buddies, I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's some money involved there somewhere. Anywhere there's a Tim Hortons, there's money involved. People who own the own Tim Hortons, they always say that uh, Tim Hortons is the bank for them. <laughs> Very expensive to get into it, but once you have a store, uh, apparently it's very profitable. The Blue 42 here has been very good to me. Running very good. And this is our load that we have behind us. It's a one ton Dodge. It's got some damage to it. On the other side, there's uh, some more windows are smashed out and won't roll up and stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's either being fixed in Winnipeg or uh, being used for parts. Uh, we're taking it from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's about a nine hour ride. fuel we're not gonna listen to Karen right there we're in Headingley which is just west of Winnipeg well, it's pretty much Winnipeg I'm just gonna grab some fuel so I can bring this truck back and park it with full tanks for the next driver or for me if I use it next seems like uh, I've been using this truck the most <laughs> I'm gonna go to that pump right there highlighted route right here Karen going to get fuel Try and keep up. I always like to leave it with full tanks. It's always a pain when you get into a truck and it's not ready for the road, you know? What does this say? No DEF available at this pump. Okay, that's okay. Don't need DEF today. And we have DEF at the yard anyway. Well, old blue, you're a bit dirty now, but it was a good trip. We had a good ride. Old Pete is over there on the end of the lineup. We'll be hanging out on Monday. For now, it's time to go home. Do stuff that isn't work. Well, that's a lie. No, there is no end to the work. 
There is just the work you get paid for and the work you don't get paid for. The work at home you usually don't get paid for. You usually have to pay for that work. Yes. Well, it's not gonna work by itself. Nothing fixes itself. Actually, I don't think there is any work that we have to really be doing at home. Uh, that vapor barrier is our next big project. And I'm probably gonna hire a professional to get that done down there because I don't want any leaks or anything. I wanna make sure all the moisture is trapped in the ground. And I'm a professional driver. I'm not a professional vapor barrier installer. So I'll do as many projects and fix as many things as I can myself, but some things you just need a professional to do to make sure it's done right. And sometimes it's just a little bit of a peace of mind getting someone who's done it before and who is professional to do it. You know, it's sort of like hauling freight. You know, you gotta move some freight from point A to point B. You could do it yourself. Or you could hire the professional who will make sure that it gets there and that all the laws and regulations are followed and that everything is done right and, you know. It all depends. I mean, you could do it yourself, but why not? Why not get the professional, right? That's the point. So let's get out of the yard here and uh, we'll be back here soon enough. Got more trucking to do on Monday. It's Saturday right now. Home sweet home. You know, you don't really realize how much you appreciate home until you're gone for a day or two. It's a little house. It's it's nothing to really show off. Like I've said before, it's a means to an end. We like it though. I mean, it's got everything we need right now. We're about to take these guys out to the, the dog park. Get them exercise, get some energy out of them. We're very fortunate that a, a new dog park opened in town. This last summer? Was it the summer before? It's the last summer, I think. Which is, it's a pretty small town, so everything is close by. Which is very handy, it's very, very nice. Once we build on our land, we'll have our own dog park. Because it won't be our yard, it'll be our dog park. Except for the front yard. The front yard is going to be mine. Nice, pristine lawn. Landscaped. A flagpole lit up at night. Rock gardens. And flower gardens it's gonna be wonderful it's gonna be a little garden of eden right in our front yard dogs aren't allowed in the front yard they're gonna be fenced in in the back and then it'll be a pretty big fence that's one of the reasons we're taking a little longer to save up to to build this place because i want a fence around as big of a portion of our land as possible we got a huge chunk of land so i don't know if i'll be able to fence the whole thing in uh like with this we want to use the same uh, fence that we used here. Just a six foot uh, black chain link. I'd like to go around our whole property. There's a, a clearing around our land already. So you could put a fence in there already. So whoever subdivided it, you know, they, they cleared lines that's clear where the property lines are, which I really appreciate. So there's no confusion. Okay, my my line or my land goes up to where there's like a, oh, it's like an eight foot, 10 foot clearing and then Right in the center of that clearing is where the, the stakes are. So there's no mistaking. We know where the end is. I really like that. But I could put a fence right down there then, right? But it's just going to cost a lot of money. Just this fence for around our little yard here. It was 141 feet of six foot chain link fence with one gate. Uh, just around half of it. Because we had a fence on the other half already, right? So cost us uh, $4,100 when we moved in here. So on our land out there... To fence the whole thing in, we're probably looking at like $40,000. Who knows? Probably more. I don't know. I just I didn't do the math in my head just there. It, it would be tens of thousands probably. So we're not probably going to be able to fence the whole thing in. We'll see. But that's why I want to save up. Because I really would like the dogs to be able to just wander our land and not have to worry. I don't even know. $40,000, 50000 That probably wouldn't even be enough. Now that I'm thinking about the math in my head, it would be quite a bit. But well, we're gonna fence in a huge portion of it anyway, so that they have this huge open space to run around in. And also I wanna take it into the bush a little bit so they can wander through the bush. And that way we don't have to worry about uh, predators, bears, and wolves as much coming into our yard. Sure, they can scale the fence if they really want to, but do they really want to? Depends on the bear, depends on the wolf, right? At least there's an obstacle there to make it harder for them, right? You put up a fence, a bear gets up to the fence, he's like, huh. Is it worth it? As long as we keep 
like our barbecue clean and keep food and garbage well taken care of and out of their scent range, what reason do they have to go through the work of climbing over our fence, right? They could. Yeah, they still. it's not going to keep everything out, but at least it'll... A little bit of peace of mind. It'll keep the dogs in, right? Our dogs, they don't jump fences. At least they haven't yet. I don't know. Life is full of surprises. And I came up... I, I didn't come up with a new quote. I uh, heard a new quote, which I'm sort of going to apply to my life and sort of make it my model. I heard it on this TV series called... Uh, what was it called again? Lost in Space. Was, uh, I downloaded this season and I've been watching it when, uh, like when I did these overnights. I was watching it on the road and... I love this quote that they had. It's called, Accept the unexpected. Not just expect it, because you know what's going to happen, but when it does happen in your life and something unexpected comes along and stops you dead in your tracks, accept it, weigh your options, and move forward. Okay? So I want to apply that to, you know, trucking and other things in my life. You know, you're walking along here, we're trying to build a house, we're trying to save up. And there's obstacles we have to get over constantly. Always something in life that comes up. So when something unexpected comes up, you stop, you accept it. This is here. This is how it is now. Weigh your options and then move forward. I thought that that uh, it resounded well with me. That way you don't get all depressed and frustrated when unexpected things happen. You don't get lost and think, oh, what am I going to do now? Now all my plans are completely thrown out the window. This is so unexpected. Yeah, all your plans get thrown out the window. Stop, accept it, weigh your options, find a way around it, and move forward. I, I, I wanted to share that with you. I, I heard that in the, in the TV, in the TV, from the TV. You know, you learn something every day. I'm not the smartest guy out there. I'll share that with you right now. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a you know, rocket scientist. I'm a truck driver. I'm confident in my ability to do my job and do it well. Uh, like I've said before, I can tell you how to tie down a load of steel, secure it safely, get it across the continent, deliver it on time through whatever weather you can throw at me. I can do that. That's where my professionalism comes in. That's what I'm prof professional at. But many things in life, like like our crawl space underneath the house, for instance, that's gonna be a big expense for us now because now I gotta hire someone who knows what they're doing to do a vapor barrier and encapsulation around our whole crawl space. And the crawl space is very small. It's only like 18 inches high. So they're gonna have to crawl around. I'm gonna have to find a contractor that actually wants to do it. <laughs> and I have to pay him to do it. That was unexpected. I did not expect that expense to pop up. But here we are. I've got to get it done because I want this house to last and I want it to be more valuable when I try and sell it than when I bought it. So we'll get this done. We realized it was a problem. We weighed our options. Now we'll move forward with it. That's the way life is. So thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate it. We had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it was a two-nighter. I'll probably do more of these in the future. I go wherever they need me. I do whatever they need me to do. I'm sort of the, their catch-all guy, I guess. Whenever they need something done, I want to make sure that I can do everything in the yard and everything that they need done so that you know I'm the guy they can count on. So I'll talk to you tomorrow. I hope you have a great weekend.